Hello everybody. Um, welcome to Bait Twitch. And this evening we're going to be tying up a white moth caddis. Some very simple materials that you'll need. Uh, hook size is kind of irrelevant because you can tie this on any hook size you feel comfortable with, whatever fish you're targeting, whatever stream location, if fish are smaller, smaller hook, you name it. It kind of goes the same for the thread. Um, I'm using some 06. Uh, white wax thread here. Some pretty standard thread for you. Um, you're you're gonna need some dubbing, um, ice dubbing, UV pearl. Uh, use any brand you feel like. This is just happens to be hairline dubbing. It's decent. I like it. Seems to have good flash in the water. And uh, my hook size is um, a size eight by Mustad. I am tying this on a streamer hook because I would like a little bit of a longer body to it. It looks more presentable. These moths down here are pretty big. Um, this fly, man, there's a variety of fish you can tackle with this. I've been catching bass like crazy on it. I don't know if it's the gold. I don't know if it's the UV pearl. Whatever. I'm pretty sure you can hook up on steelhead with this stuff too if you just add a little bit of egg juice. I mean, it's white looks like a piece of flesh rolling down a river. Steelhead are pretty vicious. So, um, deer hair. Uh, I have some natural white deer hair off of one of my pelts. Um, I prefer natural over a colored or um, a dyed white or a bleached white. Uh, you're gonna need some um, golden pheasant neck feathers. This is the neck portion. Um, and we'll be using the beard, beard feathers. So with um, no more ado here, pretty basic it is just a caddis. There's three steps and some whip finish. <laughs> That's it. So nothing else. Let's get right to this. Toss that little guy right on over there and. Now, once again, you can tie this on any hook size. You, it doesn't matter. I got some of these in 16s. I got one of them in a 20, which is kind of tricky to do because this um, the pheasant beard hair is pretty long. So, right on over to this. All right, so leave yourself a little bit of room for... I like to start about... Let's see, that's about a quarter of the way down the hook shank here. We're just gonna go ahead and take that and just wrap it all the way on down. Voiding that. And we are gonna go all the way down here. We're gonna go right to the point where that hook starts to bend. And I'm just gonna give it one two wraps back up. You can go ahead and cut your tag end at this point, as we all normally do. All right. Well, first things first, let's get the feather on. I like to go in at about 45 to a 90 degree angle. Make sure your stem of your feather is not too stiff, so you will create problems for yourself with this very thin feather. I'm actually going to go through and just clip just a little bit of extra of this off. Strip some more down. These beard necks are um, beard neck feathers. They're very wispy. They're very long. And that's the look of the fly that I wanted to do. So this is the feather I chose. Just go ahead and get that on in there. Maybe back it off a wrap because you can do that. Go ahead and then just go ahead and angle that like so. Go ahead and give a wrap and then go ahead and go to the inside once. Come back around, go to the outside, really lock that feather in there because we will be pulling on it a little bit. Get those hairs to stand up. It's not that hard. Then go ahead and just uh, finish that up, wrap it on up, and then go ahead and back wrap it. And once you get to the end of that hook shank there, go ahead and, um, ice is coming a little loose here. 
go ahead and uh, go ahead and wrap once back behind that feather just to give it a good lock point and it'll help the feather spin too in my opinion it helps us spin all right so that's now done go ahead and uh, grab your little bobbin pin here bobbin pin bobbin needle whatever you want to call it I don't even think it actually has bobbin in it it's a needle since this is uh, waxed the threads do like the part as you know you can tie your stuff flat dog running around knocking stuff over and whatnot um, yeah instead of doing a dubbing loop I do like to split the hair it's kind of a new little technique that I've been chasing down seems to be working fairly good and you just stick your needle in there and you kind of just work it up and down don't pop the threads for me I just like to put a finger through there Grab that nice uh, ice dubbing, white dubbing, whatever you may have. It doesn't have to be ice dubbing, you guys. I just like it because it gives a little extra flash on the underbelly. Pick it up like so. Go ahead and just give that a couple little spins and go ahead and draw it out a little bit. For me, this is a, a streamer hook, so I gotta have a little bit of extra, but I don't want too much on there. So I'll just roll that out and call that good. Just like that, I'll go ahead and um, bring it up to the top, pinch it just a little bit, and I'll just roll it. Roll it just lightly in your fingers. Make sure your hands are clean. Hands are dirty, or tend to want to taint it, or make it discolored, or it might not be as flash as you would like. So, just yeah, clean hands. Cleanliness is next to godliness, eh? Something like that. I think the old saying goes. Go ahead and just um, give a nice little front wrap on there. Get those top fibers locked in. Go ahead and back spin that back on up. I don't want the dubbing too tight, but I want it also. I, it's a happy medium. We all know it. Some of us do. I like to go behind the feather, give a little flash behind it. I'm having a hard time with the dubbing this evening. Go ahead and bring it on back up. It's getting a little wily again. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit more pressure. Right on up to that old good point right where I'm gonna put my my deer hair I'll leave that exposed but I'll go ahead and I'll just pull some of this off of there carefully and back around it and I'll loop it back up bam that's pretty much done give it a couple spins lock it in you can put a half inch on it if you would like it's not um, too horribly important to do that but you can. If you would like to. Kind of just get my deer hair prepped here real quick. And that, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get that on going. Alright. Oh, I got my uh, deer hair prepped in my stacker there. Now we can go ahead and uh, 
go right on through and let's uh wrap that feather up so these uh these feathers i'm pretty sure you can see that on there those hairs are super long so just try to go to the ones that are closest to the actual stem so you will notice that there is a few of these that are very close to the stem of the feather and i like to pinch those you can see how it just sprawled out that looks great that's gonna be a nice feather. that's gonna be yeah that's a great feather i do like to go through and do two wraps right on the end I have a rotary vise here. I just don't want to spin this on camera because I'd like you guys to see just right off the bat. So you guys will see my fingers for a minute or so. Go ahead and get that out of my way a little bit here. Gosh darn it. Ta-da. <laughs> they all slip on us one point or another go ahead if you if you want to make a segmented body go ahead and give that uh feather a little bit of pressure you don't have to if you don't want to but i do like to keep even spacing as possible I'm not a robot that's not too bad i like it fish don't care let's be honest I've thrown much worse I'm not really worried about that spacing at the end like I was just saying fish don't care that they do not I do like to go through and just work that feather on up there and bam bam done go through and just clip out those little hair ends go ahead and just pretty it up a little bit voila if you would like you can just take it and just kind of work that back just a little bit with the dubbing and it'll be just fine go ahead and throw a couple wraps on there well a few all right that uh dust for doing is done um deer hair like i was saying Now, with the deer hair, personally, I don't like spinning the deer hair all the way around it. I actually try to keep the bottom of it fairly clear. I'd rather have more of the hair standing up on top because moth wings are pretty thick. And they have a different appearance on top of the water. So, with that... Like to go through and try to just make it presentable as it is a moth. There we go. Struggled a little bit there with my hair. Goodness. My height is um, my white deer hair. Like I was saying, it was off of one of my personal hides. And uh, it was a winter buck, so I got a little bit of uh, under fluff there that I'm still picking out. It was a pretty fluffy hide. All right, so of the deer hair, I like to just measure my body out. Make it a little shorter is my preference. And we'll stack it about right there. Go ahead and come right on up. Hold on to this. Try to keep most of this deer hair on top of the hook shank. And just do one wrap. Don't pull tight on that first wrap. Because you're going to come back around on that second wrap. And then go ahead and give it a squeeze. Just enough to start flaring that out as you see here. Just enough. Then go through and roll the deer hair just with your fingers. Just get a little bit of hair under there. You don't need a lot. Just enough to trim that bottom flat. And then go ahead and puff ball it. And now just work in between the hairs as you normally would. And you're 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 working your your wax string here just through 
just through that deer hair as you come back up to the hook shank. Drag forward just a little bit. And you're tightening and you're just working it. That's all you are doing there. Whoop. Get those back out of there. And you're just working it. That's it. Just like that, you're almost all done. Go ahead and take that deer hair, push it back, flare it up over the top. Make, make it the way you want it, basically. How you want to see it presented. Now, I'm saying to keep that deer hair. There we go. That looks great. Keep that deer hair somewhat off of the bottom and uh, tell you why here in a second so at this step go ahead and uh, grab your whip finisher here and just go ahead and give it two or three whip finishes for me I'm gonna give it three because I'm actually uh, targeting bass with these that's why I already heard um, I'm using a bigger hook just for those bass I'm using a size 8 mustad and it's a streamer hook. That's why my body is so elongated. It's just a bigger fly. Come on back up. Whoop. Go ahead and give that about four wraps. One, two, three. Well, I'm going to get three out of that one. That's okay. Whoa. Oh, Nelly. Tighten my vice back down. Drop that little guy back in there. Goodness, made that one real tight. That deer hair back. Goodness, put quite the puff ball on there. That's okay. That just means it'll trim up nice. Put another whip finish on there. That'll be my third finish. Fly was a little loose on this go. Should have prayer prepped my vice better. That's okay. I believe I missed my second whip finish, so I'm just what it looks like putting a fourth one on there. And you're done. Now, some people kind of mess this section of the fly up a little bit. In my opinion, this is my opinion. Don't don't overcrowd this. You really don't. You want your hookup ratio to go up. Trim this stuff out of there, man. Don't clip those white hair, those um, golden hairs, because that's gonna be nice, beautiful reflection on top of the water for you. But make sure that this path here, I didn't clip any of those. I might've clipped one, that's okay. Fish don't care. But that goldness gives you a nice profile view. Now, with this, <laughs> with this, measure twice, cut once. I've been cutting up quite a few of these. So I'll just go ahead and come on up here. I am taking my scissors and I am pitching them. I want it to go up towards these nice long white deer wisp hairs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just come on up and I'm just gonna do a nice, slanted head on this just like that voila now come on over to the other side we'll do the same thing nice slant if you get a couple of those wispy deer hairs in there, it's okay. It's just going to blend it. It's not the end of the world. A couple little extras there that I want to get out. All right. See, now you can see that profile down in here. That is called hookup ratio. That's gonna be my only funny little thing I say on this. I do it to all of my flies. I try to keep this hook as clean as possible. 
there's no point of missing a fish because you stack too much deer hair down into this situation here because it's not like the fish have opposable thumbs they're not popping popcorn all day you know it's not easy you just make it nice and wispy and that hits the water it's gonna be absolute gorgeous i know basco nuts over it i've caught in brown trout on these smaller versions like 60 knot hooks they love them so yeah that is that that is the white moth caddis you should almost call it a golden caddis but thank you for uh tuning in to bait twitch and uh i'll catch you guys on the next fly